big New York style breakfast for Rudy, in which there were going to be bagels and lox. Now, I had heard about them, but I had never seen them before. And I think, I think if, you, if you can remember that, this story will have some significance. So I get up, and uh, first thing, you know, Rudy gives me a big hug, and of course I'm already nervous. He's uh, upset me completely. He's there. <laughs> um, um, so I asked him if he wanted some tea or coffee or something, and he said, yeah, and why wouldn't I toast him a, a bagel? If I would toast him a bagel, that'd be great. <laughs> so I walked over to this big bag full of, you know, New York bagels, and I pulled one out, and it was big, you know. In, in Texas, we call them cement donuts, but um, I pulled out this big bagel, and I looked at the bagel, and I looked at the toaster. <laughs> so I walked over to the, um, the oven, and I turned the broiler on. I knew it wasn't going to fit in the toaster. So I thought I could just, you know, kind of shove it in the broiler and toast it up, and he, everything would be fine. And he's kind of he's kind of sitting there, he's watching me. You know? <laughs> and finally, he gets up and he walks over and he says, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and, and like you, Faith, I think it was about 15 or 16 at the time. I said, "I'm going to toast the bagel." <laughs> he says, he looked at me like, "Are you for real? You, know? you don't know how to toast a bagel?" So he walks over and he pulls out a knife and slices it in half and slaps it in the toaster. And so that's how I learned how to toast bagels. Uh, this isn't my story. It belongs to Jane, who, when she started thinking about it, I don't know if you know her, she's a nurse, realized, said that she'd never met Rudy. And then she realized that two years before she met Rudy, she met Rudy, which means that she was taking care of a friend of hers who was terminally ill with a brain tumor, and this woman was in a wheelchair, couldn't talk, was very close to dying, could barely move, had no more hair left, and was just very hard to look at, and she would take the woman out to the Central Park, or, yeah, Central Park Zoo for a walk, and most people would avoid her friend. Her friend's name was Bertie, and uh, Bertie, but Bertie was still conscious enough to love the, the air and the light and to get out. And one day, when Bertie was very close to dying, uh, Jane took her to the zoo, and they sat at a picnic table. And uh, Jane was very, very depressed, because they'd been very close friends, and she knew it was very close to the end, and she didn't know what to do. And all of a sudden, this enormous man shows up, very fat, funny-looking man, with, a, with no hair and a baseball cap. <laughs> <laughs> And she said, uh, well, this, this is pretty weird. This guy is pretty weird. He said, do you mind if I sit down? And she said, no, the day was already bad enough. So <laughs> he sat down and just started breathing and, and took a look at, at Bertie. And she said, this man just started telling the most off-color jokes <laughs> she had ever heard. <laughs> and she was so shocked that she just went beyond shock to laughing, and he got Bertie to laughing, and they spent about half an hour just laughing. <laughs> and he said, well, excuse me, now I've got to go. And that was it. And shortly thereafter, her friend Bertie died, and Jane had completely put this out of her mind until, I guess it was a year or two years later, when she walked into the store, wherever it was, and met Rudy, and realized what a service he had done to her. I found myself in Rudy's neighborhood, his store, and dropped by and walked in. I was 17 years old and looked at Rudy and first thing I think I said to him was I introduced myself and said, you know, you look like one of those Zen masters in paintings or sculptures. And he looked at me and said, not Zen masters, Buddhas in general, because I am a Buddha. <laughs> Which kind of, kind of took me back a little bit. <laughs> and then, just as I was kind of trying to recover from that, he strokes the little stubble on my chin and says, you look like a chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm walking around his store feeling stranger and stranger, really. And at one point or another, 
some sensations that I had started to have in my heart um, while I was in meditation basically started going berserk until the point at which I felt that my whole chest was basically melting to the to the floor and I wasn't sure where I was anymore and the next thing I knew I felt somebody's arm around me and I looked and there was Rudy's arm and he's looking at me and kind of face to face and says it's all a matter of surrender to this energy. <laughs> Stuart tells this story about Rudy. He said at one point Rudy uh, looked at Stuart and a few other students and he said, you know, I have a lot to give you guys and if you're not going to take it from me, I'm going to leave it in a Chinese restaurant one night and the guy who sits down in the seat after me is going to burn to a crisp. <laughs>